What's the deal with interest rates? What does the market update tool say? And what are the two conversations you need to have if you're considering making a real estate transition? Everybody talks about the first one. That's the no brainer stuff. And I'm kind of glad nobody talks about the second one because it makes me feel special. What's up my guy, John o here selling North Dallas real estate. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And if you appreciate content like this, hit the like button. You'll get a little uh, confetti dance. It's going to be in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Touch the thumb. Let's just get into it. So on the channel, we talk about, we are all about data, not drama. And we really don't like convincing people of things. As weird as that can sound, we genuinely consider ourselves consultants. And we just want to educate you on how the market is behaving. What you do with that information is completely up to you. Then I will write it down. But if we can help in your scenario, reach down in the description. There's a phone number that goes straight to me. You can send us an email or there's a Google form you can fill out and we will get back in contact with you. We have people reaching out every day and it's amazing. We love helping folks exploring their opportunities here in the Dallas area, more specifically North Dallas or Collin County. So every week we do a market update video. This week is no exception. Maybe we can make an exception. In terms of order of importance, um, I want to talk about the two conversations that we need to have first. Uh, and as I mentioned, everybody talks about the first one. It's the uh, the static things. What are you looking for in your next home? Do you need a pool? Do you not want a pool? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? How big you want it? How much land you want? That sort of thing. Everybody talks about those static parameters. And nobody talks about the second. I train real estate agents and as far back as I can remember, everyone has had some sort of problem with diving into this second area. What makes you think I've got problem with that? Now, in psychology, we know that people buy on emotion and they justify with logic. The decision is made emotionally, and then we justify our decision with logic. If you haven't played around in the comment section, I would highly encourage you to do that. The comment section's out of control. We love you guys. Jump in there, let us know what you think about this stuff. Jump in. But I wanna know how this strikes you. Usually the first question I ask when I get on the phone with someone is, what's got you thinking about making a move? We wanna dive into the why, and there's really only about three reasons why people typically move, but it's different for everyone. And what people normally say is they will answer with logical stuff. Well, the house we have is too small, or we're renting, and we're first time home buyers, or we've got a ton of equity in the property, and it just makes sense right now for us to upgrade or right size or whatever the situation, right? There's a surface level answer that's oftentimes given. And what we say in the business is we wanna peel that onion and find out what are the emotional reasons driving that? In my experience, I've been at this for a while, I've bought and sold a lot of homes, I've helped a lot of people do that. It is 99% of the time, there is some emotional part of the equation. And real estate agents, if you're an agent and you're watching this, you need to dive into this with people. Anyway, there, there's, a, there's a whole host of reasons and, and the scope of this video is not really to talk about the why, but find out what's really driving that. And especially when we talk to people that are relocating from outside of the area, California, New York, uh, this happens a lot with both of those camps, is people are just fed up with the mess in the area that they're in, the political climate, the mandates. I dedicated my life to your mandates. On and on, the homeless scenario, right? Like that can sometimes embarrass people because you know, what, what does that really have to do with real estate? Well, the truth is buying and selling a house, unless you just do it all the time, it's a pain in the butt. It really is, it is highly stressful. And even if you've done it before. It's okay, I've done it before. The National Association of Realtors says that the average family will move every seven years. That was six years ago. So for most people, they have not had a conversation like this for seven years. If you've forgotten what it's like to buy or sell a home, it's stressful. And just because you've got a ton of equity in your property, for most people, that's not enough to offset what's going on. And especially because it's real estate, because it's your home where you live in, your castle, however you describe it, 
there's an emotional connection for most people. Even if you're one of these guys that doesn't like to talk about that emotional stuff, which I get, it's so important. And if you'll allow your guide, whomever that may be, if you'll allow them to walk you through that and peel that onion, you will be the beneficiary of that exploration. I've had people say, and I'll, I'll get to the, the market update here in just a second, but I've had people say, we want to buy this. We feel like we deserve this. We've worked our tails off. So they're diving into the emotional side first, but then when we start to look at the logical side, you know, I don't know how to say this gently, but their interest in buying a house is not enough, right? When I met Katie, uh, we will have been married 23 years in March. I didn't just walk up to her, look her up and down and say, I'm interested, let's go get married. Let's get married. Right? Interest alone is not enough. There's exploration. What do you like to do? What's your relationship like with your mama? What's your relationship like with your daddy? All of those questions that we ask during the courting phase to see if someone is a good fit. Buying a home is a lot like that, right? We want a bigger house, we want a smaller house, we want more bedrooms, we want you know, more bathrooms, we want a pool, we want a bathroom by the pool. All the logical reasons people give, those are all fine and, and good. And, and we'll have that conversation if we, if we speak. In fact, any real estate agent you talk to is gonna ask those questions. But what, what I feel like truly makes us unique and what we don't run into is other agents that will ask the why. Okay, so you want a bigger house. How does that make your life better? How does that benefit you to have a bigger house? What does that mean for you guys? And it usually takes people back when we start to ask those questions, but they're so appreciative that we've explored that because you really need both sides to line up. You need the logical side to make sense. What's your interest rate gonna be? How much uh, cash do you have at your disposal for down payment or to make up a gap between the, uh, the sale price and the appraisal value, right? All those logical things. Can you afford to make the payments? Those are, those are good things to study, but also the emotional side. Why are we doing this? What impact is that gonna have on your kiddos? What impact is that gonna have on your family? How does that improve X, Y, Z, right? And every conversation is different because you know all families are different. But that's something that really separates us from other real estate companies. And I've been training agents for years and most agents are deathly afraid to dive into that stuff. And they say things like, man, it's none of my business or that's too personal or what does that have to do with real estate? It has everything to do with real estate because there's so much at stake here, right? If you're buying a steak dinner and the meal is terrible and you just dropped 250 bucks on dinner, well, you're gonna eat again tomorrow right? But when it's your home, there's people have an emotional connection, even if they don't like to admit it, there's a lot happening there beyond just the static stuff. So hopefully that's helpful. Two conversations that you need to be having, both the logical side, but also the emotional side. And hopefully whatever guide you decide to work with is going to feel comfortable and confident to walk you through that area of discovery. All right, so before we jump into the market update, let's take a look at uh, what interest rates are doing. So if you're not familiar with this website, um, this is a really handy website. And there's actually an app you can download for your phone. I, I just uh, use the site, but it's mortgagenewsdaily.com forward slash mortgage dash rates. If you're not familiar with this site, this is the site, that's usually my go-to site to see what rates are doing. Today, we're 7.16 for a 30-year fix and 6.62 for 30-year FHA. One thing to consider, Let's say we were having this conversation nine months ago when the market was just absolutely bananas here in Dallas. Most sellers were really only interested in looking at offers if you were an all cash buyer or if you were using conventional financing, which would be this 30 year fixed right here. They were not interested in talking to FHA or VA buyers. In fact, on my listings, it never failed. I would get calls from agents and they would ask the question. The buyer agent would ask me, the listing agent, these guys are VA, do we even need to bother sending the offer over? which is shocking to me, but that they had never failed. And I would say, yes, of course, please send the offer over. My clients are interested in the best offer, but there are a lot of buyers out there that they would, or excuse me, there were a lot of sellers out there that would completely discount an offer from a prospective buyer if they were either VA or FHA, which we won't get into the, the legal implications of that, but they were being advised by their agents, look, the more secure, uh, offers are typically gonna be either all cash or conventional. 
Well, that's different now, and we'll talk about this here in just a second when we get to the market update tool, but because offers have scaled way back, now uh, these, these buyers that are using FHA and VA loans have an opportunity that they haven't had in the last couple of years because of the market frenzy. So if you're a first time home buyer or if you're thinking about making a move and you're looking at a program like FHA or VA, then this is a great opportunity for you at, at this point in the market. So does that mean it's your time to buy? Of course not, right? Everybody's situation is different and it would take a conversation with a trusted advisor to ascertain, is this uh, an intelligent time for you right now? But be that as it may, sellers are willing to wheel and deal today like they haven't been willing to in the last couple of years because of what the market is doing. And especially for those people that are buying right now, the market typically lulls uh, at the end of the third quarter. So if the people that are selling right now have to sell and there's a shortage of buyers and you can um, capitalize on that if you're in a position to do so. Okay, so there's the update on rates. Um, I would encourage you, well, I don't care if you bookmark it or not, but I bookmark mortgagenewsdaily.com and this is usually my go-to when I look at that. So uh, as a favor, I'll also throw it down in the description um, in case that saves you a step, but definitely give those guys a look. Okay, so we're in North Dallas. The, the name of the channel is Selling North Dallas, so we typically look at Collin County. If you're interested in getting your hands on this report, down in the description, you can get a link. We'll email that to you, and you can download the report, and you can look at not only all the counties here in the DFW Metroplex, but in other counties or other uh, cities in the U.S. So let's say you're in Nebraska, uh, Omaha, O-M-A-H-A, -A, Nebraska. You just type in the city and here you go. You've got the whole city. All right, so there you go. There's an example of, of how to take a look at the tool. All right, but we wanna look at Collin County all right, so we've dropped a point. So this little gas gauge that we refer to a lot, we were at 100 several months ago, and now, actually market action, that's this report. So on Friday, June 24th, we we're at 82.64, and we have dropped down to 49. It's starting to, starting to slow down, starting to flatten out the rate at which we go from this side of the gauge over to this side. A buyer's market is at 30, we're at 49, that's where it was last week, so we're kind of holding steady there. And a lot of the trends that we're seeing are holding true here. Uh, median rent is leveled out, inventory is leveling out, price decreases are leveling out. So take a look at this tool, download that, and make sure that you're, um, you just wanna be informed. Let me put it to you this way. Let's say you wanted to lose weight. The weight or the number on the scale is one data point. It does not tell the whole story. If you're familiar with how the human body works, muscle weighs more than fat, right? So you can start a diet or exercise regimen and the scale not move and that can be disheartening. It's one metric point. In fact, I don't think I've ever in my history of being a real estate agent seen someone that made a decision to buy or sell based on market activity. They just don't do that, which is the reason we talk about that those points in the beginning. There's usually some emotional connection that's driving this and they're looking to justify it with logic. And sometimes that lines up and they feel really smart or really lucky for choosing to sell while the market is really high and it, it feels great. And for people that need to sell right now, maybe they're not as excited because the market is less favorable than maybe it was nine months ago, but it is what it is. You still probably have, in fact, I'll bet you dollars to donuts, if you are exploring real estate as your primary residence, then you're probably sensing there's something about your home or the neighborhood or the location or the state or the people that are around you that is making you think, we gotta get the heck out of here. And in fact, this is something that's not talked about a lot in this arena, but it is in human psychology, is people often make decisions to either move towards pleasure or away from pain. And it's like 90% of the time they make that decision to avoid pain rather than seeking pleasure. That's just how it is. So having someone that can walk you through those, those points and look at the entire program and not just 
what does the number on the scale say to use the health reference or the diet and exercise reference, but that's one data point. So speaking of emotional reasons, we just worked with, uh, we're in the process of working with a family that's coming from another state, wants to come to Dallas, they found the channel, they're excited to make the transition, but there's a lot of things going on in their world. In fact, if you click this link right here, it's a home that we showed them and we actually got a chance to interview her while we were making that video. So if you got a couple of minutes, check that out and then come back here. I think you'll find there's a lot of people just like you that are, that are in this situation and maybe the timing is fortunate or unfortunate. You'd have to decide that for yourself. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Here's Ice Cube to give you his two cents. Bye Felicia.